Right, so typically we're printing our drone bits in TPU, right? TPU is a phenomenal material, super durable, flexible, you can beat the shit out of it and it's gonna be fine. It'll stand up to a lot of abuse, but TPU can be a real fickle bitch to print. Now, I've got something very special here from the Netherlands. This is a flexible resin from this company, who we will be referring to as DW. But please let me know how to pronounce this. I actually asked the owner of the company and he just told me to Google it, which was not very much help. But there we go. This is Type D Flex from DW. And judging by what I've seen on their Instagram, this stuff is kind of incredible and is like a really flexible rubbery type material. So let's stick this in the brand new Anycubic M5S Pro, get it calibrated, see if we can print some drone parts for it, and maybe do some testing on them. Like how practical is it really going to be to use something like this over TPU? Because obviously TPU is tried and true, and this, this is a whole new territory. If this works out though, I think this might be the way to go because resin printing is so much easier than FDM printing. Uh, and if you don't believe me, I'm going to leave a link to a video down below that you can check out that uh, is going to teach you everything you need to know about resin printing. And then you can decide if it's easier or harder than FDM printing. But in my opinion, and I've done a lot of both, resin printing is significantly easier. Anyway, all right, let's get this tuned up and see where we land. All right, so this resin, like all resins, uh, suggests that you shake well before use. Going in. That is very black. Right, so we're gonna figure out the normal layer exposure time for this resin, but we're gonna use Anycubic's RERF feature, which is just absolutely incredible. And we're gonna start at 1.5 and go up to three point something and try and work out what the best is. From this data sheet I found, they suggest a 2.2 second exposure on a 50 micron layer height on the Photon Mono X, which is the closest thing to the Mono M5S Pro. They both have Mono LCDs, so they should have very similar performance. So we can probably expect that our correct result is gonna be somewhere around here. But yeah, I think starting at 1.5 is gonna be good. The only other thing I wanna change here is the lift distance. And we're gonna increase that by about four millimeters. So we'll up that to 12, just because this resin will be stretching. So as it like tries to pull away from the FEP, we wanna make sure that there's a little bit more extra height uh, to really ensure that it fully separates from the FEP before continuing on to the next layer. So with that, uh, I think th those settings are going to be a good starting point. Oh my god, why do some resins smell really good? Someone please tell me. Okay, so let's get in here with our planter, bring it underneath, pull the build plate out like that. Oh, how cool is this? We got some failures here. Oh, some hardcore delamination from underexposure. So we'll have to do a vat clean. But yeah, this is our 1.5 second is all screwed up. Our 1.75 fared a little bit better. Two seconds is all fucked up. 2.25 is all fucked up. Yeah, even 2.5 is fucked up. And then 2.75 as well is fucked up. Three seconds is fucked up. And then 3.25 has even as well a little bit of screwiness in that top. Can you see this? So even three seconds is a little fucked up on the top there. So these are all underexposed results. So I'm going to start my next, I'm going to run this print again. I'm going to start the next one at 3.25 after I get these out and after we do a vat clean. Yeah, I can already feel, that's really interesting. It's like, uh, it feels like like, I don't know, like some sort of hard lolly. They're coming away pretty easily, which is good. Cool. Ooh, that was tricky. Yummy. Okay, round two is complete. Uh, I got my uh, air extraction thing installed on this machine because yeah, this resin stinks and I don't wanna run the risk of breathing this shit. Um, yeah, please, if you do get into resin, 
handle with care. Take the necessary precautions. There's a link as well to this if you if you're uh, if you're interested in setting that up. There we go, looking much better this time. So we have signs of underexposure on our 3.25 second result. 3.5 seconds is looking good. We got no failure cones and one success cone. Okay, so this will be 3.75 seconds. And I can see one, it's really hard to see on this resin, one success cone. Okay, so even all the way up here at uh, five, seven, five, four, two, five, five, seven, five. Even all the way up here at five seconds, we've still only got three of our success cones. And then on the failure side, there's no failure cones. This, this is still an underexposed result at five seconds, which is kind of wild, um, for a mono LCD screen. But you know, Hey, that's, that's just the property that's because of this resin. So, uh, we're going to go even higher. <laughs> all right. I reckon. I reckon we've got it now. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, okay, I lowered my bird in too much. Man, this is a fucking dick around. It's not normally this much of a pain in the ass. Uh, so this is five seconds. I mean, we can still learn something here. So what's interesting is all the way up here at, I think this is six seconds, is there's still not all of the success cones. Actually, what's amazing is they all look the same. Like this one, this one, this one, and this one all have basically the exact same cone formation, which is like three and a half cones on each one. So I think we might actually be just like, no matter how much we expose those joints where the cone first starts printing, no matter how much we expose that, it's just impossible for those to form below a certain size with this resin. Like no amount of overexposure is gonna make it work. So something really interesting about this resin is like, yes, it's super flexible. Like if I press on it, it's very rubbery, but where it's different to like TPU is if I deform it, it doesn't want to bounce back. It just stays however it was deformed, which maybe doesn't actually work quite in our favor. All right, so I decided to just try and print some stuff directly on the build plate. This is not a, a resin 3D printing best practice at all, uh, but we'll see how we go. It's worth a shot. Uh, I mainly chose to do this because we didn't arrive at a satisfactory answer with the cones of calibration, uh, and I can't be fucked doing a dimensional accuracy calibration. So we're just going to wing it, and, and, and we're going with three point something, 3.75 seconds, which should be good, should be good. If I'm expecting they're probably gonna be a little bit overexposed with 3.5 seconds, but uh, print's done and we've got some stuff. So let's, let's have a look here. Okay, look at this. Look at this. It's, it's, uh, it's not a complete failure. We lost one of the feet, but Everything's there for the most part and looking pretty good. Let me grab my, what's he? My spatula. Yeah, this is great. Uh, this is a lot more than I expected, if I'm being honest. So let's start with, where do we start? Where do we begin? This is crazy. Okay, a little tricky to get off. Oh, a little bit of delamination there too. In that part. So it might still be, might actually be underexposing a bit. Yeah, see this? Like this is, this is likely delamination or it's a, an issue with the file because it looks like, yeah, that might be an issue with the file actually because it's repeated on every single one of these feet where it's split in the exact same spot. So I think that's actually just a problem with the file rather than under exposure, so that's fine. That one looks good. Look at that little guy. I think this one I'm most excited about, the, the camera mounts. That looks so clean. Hang on, uh, fucker, come on, get on. Uh, I'll show you in a sec. These look good. I was expecting these parts to fail. These are the, uh, like the, the electronics protectors that I designed for the uh, T5 
TBS Source 1 V5. They look super nice. So let's uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, you see this? Look at that. Look at that part, man. And then this one, look at that. That's so clean. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna get these in the wash machine. So I was not sure at all how long I should wash this stuff for. So I did a pretty long wash of 15 minutes. Well, they feel clean, I think. Maybe a little tacky. I really hope with this resin that when I do the post cure, it uh, it loses all tackiness. Because if it if it always feels tacky, that's gonna concern me a bit. But um, good looking parts, that's for sure. Like look at look at this one, that front camera mount slash bumper. It's really nice. Just gonna uh, dry those parts off with the fan first before we uh, do the final cure. All right, we just did a five minute cure, which based on the recommended normal layer exposure value, I think is gonna be Plenty sufficient, um, but I'm still still wearing gloves because I'm fucking, I'm a little wary of this resin, hey. Let's have a look here. Okay, all right. So we've got kind of a, not a brilliant finish, unfortunately, from the, from the wash. Like it, it looks a bit gross. <laughs> And, hmm. Okay, you know what? I might have to like, yeah, these, they feel, these parts feel like they're a bit, a bit stuck to the, the mag, to this plate. So I might flip them over and do them again. Another five minutes just to be safe. Fucking interesting material, this. All right, so we just gave these parts another five minutes. They should now be good, hopefully. This material is pretty fucking wild. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's try this one. Or actually, because I didn't print these with supports, that overhang in there is pretty bad. That's okay. So this, yeah. Look at that. Okay, it's kind of going back to where it started, but not really. You know what it's like? It's like licorice. Oh, look at that. So I reckon, yeah, this would work. You could put this on your drones, but I'm just wondering like if, if like the parts do deform and don't quite go back to where they originally were, does it even really matter? Does it even matter at all? I think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take a couple of these parts outside and go bash them with a hammer and see what happens. I don't have a drone at the moment to install these on. Uh, I do have some parts, but I got to build the thing. So yeah, bashing these with a hammer will be the best I can do for the moment.
does take quite a beating before it starts to fall apart. And it's interesting the way that it fails too. It kind of, yeah, like crumbles almost. Very, very interesting material, this one. It definitely takes a lot of abuse before it does break. So, I mean, yeah, it would totally hold up to a few crashes, I think. Where I'm a bit hung up though on this resin is uh, despite the large amount of post-processing I gave it with like a really long wash cycle and more than double the amount of cure time I normally give for resins. Uh, and it still feels like a little bit tacky. I just, I don't, it feels like a massive sort of health and safety risk, this one. I, I just, I'm not, I don't think I can recommend this resin for drone bits. I mean, it's a really impressive material, that's for sure. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think this is, this is, a, this is a more, this one's not for the faint of heart. Let's put it that way. And you know what? It looks like actually you can't even buy this stuff anymore anyway, at least not directly from DW. Looks like there's a couple of shops stocking it, but um, yeah, as far as I can tell, this stuff is discontinued. Uh, but anyway, I think this is an interesting idea and I think it's one worth pursuing further. Uh, I do have some other resins that could possibly be up to the task. Soriatech Tenacious, for example. There's at least one or two other flexible resins in my collection. So yeah, we might come back to this in future. Maybe this could be a series, depending how many of you watch this thing. Uh, we might, yeah, see if there's a resin out there that's a fit for FPV. I mean, who knows? There might be. And then if there is, that's fucking incredible because like I said at the beginning, resin can be pretty simple. I mean, probably watching this, you're thinking like, no, <laughs> not at all. Um, this, I would say this is an edge case, but maybe then, yeah, maybe like with TPU, because you know, with filament printing, PLA is easy, right? Easy mode. But then, yeah, you start trying to do TPU and TPU is just a massive bitch. Uh, maybe it's the same thing here, but I don't know. I don't know because I've printed... Not flexible resins, but tough resins that have some flex in them, some, some give before they break. And th those have never posed any issue. Those have been easy to calibrate, easy to print with. No dramas there. But yeah, maybe it is once you just get into the super flexible stuff. Uh, that's when shit starts getting tricky. But I've only ever printed with a 95A Shore Hardness TPU. M maybe it's the case that that stuff I just printed was like a 75A or an 85A or something. I, I don't have the experience. I don't know for sure, but I'd be interested. I would be interested to hear though your experience. Maybe you can tell just by looking at the uh, the behavior of this resin. Uh, where do you think it lands on the sure hardness scale? <laughs> All right. I think what we'll do next time is we'll try one of those tough resins and we will modulate the properties of the resin with this really cool feature that Prusa Slicer has, the ability to export G-code as a model, which is fucking wild. So hang on, export toolpaths as OBJ, which can give us 3D models like this, which for resin will be, yeah, super fucking cool. I think that could work pretty well, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and we'll do that in another episode. Thanks for watching, subscribe and uh, all that stuff. Yeah, cheers.